Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another financial analysis video. And in this video today, we are going to be looking at a company called ITM Power. So ITM Power, what do they do? Here it comes. Um, so these guys are, it's a British manufacturer of, I'm going to read this, uh, polymer electrolyte membrane electrolyte electrolyzers for hydrogen production via electrochemical splitting of water into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen produced via electrolysis is used for power to X storage, decarbonizing industrial uses and hydrogen for fuel cell products. OK, so basically they're producing oxygen and hydrogen through this uh, technology that they're using. Uh, this We're looking at this company at the request of one of our viewers. Um, so this is Liam um, who has requested. So thank you very much, Liam. Here is uh, your analysis. Now, uh, remember ITM Power, when we're looking at this company, if you're interested in investing in this company and you are interested in doing fundamental analysis, then this will be useful to you. But this is not the only analysis that you should be doing. You should be understanding the company, uh, the products, the market, uh, the management, uh, the potential, uh, it, the competitors, all of that needs to be investigated. And we're not going to be looking at that. All we're looking at here is the financial analysis. And hopefully uh, uh, this analysis of the income statement, the balance sheet and the cash flow and some of the key salient points being picked out will help you make an increasingly informed judgment and decision. Maybe uh, you want to do business with this company. Maybe you're thinking about joining this company. Uh, maybe you are just interested in analyzing financial statements and want to learn more. So hopefully these uh, few minutes uh, will be useful for you. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel um, using the buttons um, uh, on your screen. Uh, and that will help you to uh, receive additional updates and notifications. And if you have any comments on this, um, whether you think it was useful, whether you want to add additional information that you think uh, would be useful to um, uh, other viewers then please do uh, use the comments section and if you'd like us to look at a company of yours then obviously you can do that as well so let's jump straight in and have a look at these uh, financials and uh, here they come if i could just pull them up on the screen here we go. So here is ITM Power. So these uh, financial statements are very easily available on their website, um, very easy to access and lots of information about the company. So always, whenever you look through a set of financial statements, you'll get a lot of information uh, about the company, the strategy, the products, what they're up to, uh, and do take time to read through this. Although do remember this is prepared by the directors uh, and this is as much as anything a marketing um, uh, brochure. So they will be giving you all the good news. Uh, what we're going to try and do is dig around in the financial statements and see if it is all good news or whether there are a few gremlins of which you should be aware. So uh, you'll notice that we are over halfway through the report and we're still getting information. And here we go to the financial statements. So um, we are dealing in uh, thousands of pounds. Um, and so the top line, the revenue for this company is uh, 3.3 million pounds. So 3.3 million pounds, which is a fall uh, from the previous year of 28%. Uh, so that's not looking so good. And then the costs have increased. So they're, they're, they're Basically, their gross margin has fallen uh, from 25, uh, a 25 percent loss ratio in 2019 to 177 uh, loss ratio uh, this year. So the gross loss uh, uh, has increased. Now, uh, I'm not sure exactly why that is, um, but it looks to me like, uh, you know, there's still a bit of kind of, you know, bedding down to be to, to be done here. Um, before they're actually starting to produce um, hydrogen at a profitable um, level, because obviously you can't you can't uh, grow a business on those kind of uh, ratios. So um, first thing to notice is uh, the revenues coming down. Um, the direct costs have been increasing uh, and therefore the gross loss has been increasing and the gross gross loss ratio has been increasing. Um, in terms of the operating costs, uh, let's just uh, clear those drawings, uh, those annotations and scroll down a little bit further down. So we then come into the operating costs 
and uh, really a reflection of a company, you know, very early on, a very new company. Uh, we see big, big costs here is all about the prototype production and engineering. So they're still testing reasonable amount of research and development, lots of testing going on, big increase um, in this prototype. Um, and there's some sales and marketing. Uh, and then here are the admin expenses. So kind of that 7 million, that last admin expense, that's the underlying cost of running the business, rent, rate, light, heat, travel, HR, finance, all that kind of, you know, stuff that you find in every single company. So these have all been split out to kind of show you that, you know, th th there's not a lot being spent actually on the sales and marketing. They're really investing a lot in that, in this, in this prototyping. Uh, and as a result, bottom line is that they are making a loss. Um, little bit of finance costs, a um, little bit up from the previous year, suggesting maybe there's a little bit of debt sitting on the balance sheet. We'll find that out, um, uh, but nothing really to speak of. But still, you know, these guys, you know, their loss has gone up significantly. It looks like that that's driven by, um, you know, their prototyping and, you know, they, they're just not quite at their, um, uh, you know, at, at that profitability break even yet. Um, let's go and have a look at the balance sheet and see uh, the strength of the business. Uh, so in terms of the balance sheet, we've got the non-current assets. Um, these are the things that we own that we need to run the business. Um, so you'll notice, so first of all, um, this number here, this right of use assets, um, that didn't appear in the previous year. That's just an accounting standard. That's like if you rent a photocopier last year, you could put it through as rent, which is a PL item. And uh, this year, you now actually have to show the cost of the photocopier on your balance sheet and the kind of the, the rent you're going to have to pay in the future as a liability. So it's just an accounting adjustment. So don't worry too much about that. Um, so we notice that there's a little bit of increase in property, plant, and equipment, some increase in tan intangible assets and we can find out about that uh, on note 13 um, and so the non-current assets has gone up to about 15 million current assets up to 67 million and quite a lot of cash there so um, cash has gone up to uh, nearly 40 million up from 5 million suggesting that they've been a lot of fundraising during the year and we will uh, find out whether we are correct in that um, uh, as we scroll down through to the cash flow a little bit further down, we see, um, uh, so we, th there's no debt, there is no debt on the, um, on the balance sheet. So that interest that we were paying would, would have been actually kind of the least costs um, uh, uh, in terms of the business. Um, and here we have the total current liabilities um, uh, versus the, so the, the, that's the, the, so the, you know, the total um, uh, current liabilities um, uh, compared, um, and we would want to compare that to the, um, to the current assets. So the current assets, if you remember, 67 million. Current liabilities, 21 million. Liquidity doesn't look a massive issue. Um, so if you're a supplier, it looks like they're gonna be able to pay your bills, which is good. Um, equity, uh, so this is kind of how the company is funded. Um, so these two numbers is the uh, the investment by the shareholders, about 100 and, uh, what's that, 160 million of which the company has spent uh, uh, 100 million and it's still got 60 million left uh, effectively to kind of, you know, to, 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 to get through before effectively the balance sheet goes negative. So last thing to look at, I guess, is the cash flow. Um, so we'll just scroll on down through to, to the cash flow, ignore the movement in equity as, as uh, you, obviously there's going to be no dividends there. So we can see here, so the net cash flow from operating activities, 12 million. So this is effectively their cash burn. So uh, they're making a loss, but they're also, uh, they are, you know, there's an accounting loss of about 30 million EBIT, um, uh, but their, uh, EBIT, their, their cash burn is only 12 million, which isn't too bad. Um, because they've got quite a lot of cash in the bank, um, uh, they've got about uh, uh, 40 million of cash in the bank at the moment, which means that they've got uh, over three years of cash burn left. So reasonably strong, you know, to, 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 to get this business on its, uh, on its feet and, and, and get, it, get it running. Um, investment going on in the business, investment in property, plant and equipment, that's always good. Um, and uh, also, 
the financing activities. So here we have the issue of shares. So they've done a pretty significant fundraiser, not expecting to see any more um, uh, uh, shares being issued over the foreseeable future, the next few years, um, uh, unless they've got some big investment um, opportunities that they want to exploit. So there's no debt. Um, it's equity funded. They did a big uh, fundraising. Uh, we wouldn't expect them to have to do any more fundraising because they're sitting on this 40 million uh, in the bank. They're burning at about 12 million. If they need to carry on investing, uh, they're only investing at um, uh, you know another sort of 10 million, for example. So they've certainly got you know two, maybe three years um, worth of cash um, uh, left there, and hopefully that is enough time for them to be able to turn this business um, uh, into a profitable one. So. Uh, there is the um, uh, there are the financial statements. Let's have a quick look at the share price in the market, um, and we can see that um, these guys, um, you know, there's a lot of good news coming out there. So if you were an investor at the early 2019, then you'd have done extremely well as they went all back up. It looks to me like they kind of they just catching their breath. Maybe maybe they kind of got ahead of themselves. Maybe this was a bit throffy um, and uh, there's been a little bit of a correction. Where does it go from there? Um, well, you know, maybe there's a projection going up up like this. Um, you know, who knows? Uh, you know, that's that's kind of you know that's for you to um, to assess. Um, but the company, uh, the market cap for the company is currently at two point one five billion. Um, so just to put that into context for us, um, uh, that's about 650, uh, 650 times sales, but there aren't really sales at the moment. So that's probably a bit of a misnomer. Um, the balance sheet is only 55 million. So it's really all goodwill in there. So, you know, there looks like there's good news in this business. It looks like that good news. A lot of it is priced in no P ratio because there's no earnings right now. Um, so it doesn't look cheap. Let's put it like this. I'm not saying that this is a sort of a screaming buy to me, but it looks like a company that's, um, you know, that's on the cusp of starting to, you know, make some make some profit. The prototypes are, are being rolled out um, and, uh, you know, it's got the cash in the bank to be able to survive for the next few years. So it's not it's not going to fold um, in the next 12 months. It's not overly high risk from that perspective. So hopefully that was a useful analysis for you. Once again, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. Um, leave your comments in the comments um, uh, uh, box uh, below. Uh, uh, let me know uh, what your thoughts are on this business, whether it's a great opportunity, um, whether you think that you wouldn't touch it with a barge pole or whether you've been uh, uh, sniffing around it as, as a potential opportunity. Um, uh, if you know anything else about the business, about the contracts they've signed, the latest developments, um, then obviously that is useful to know as well. Um, if you've got any companies you'd like us to look at, then please do also leave those in the comments. Um, I can't guarantee we can get through all of them. Um, we do get quite a lot of companies being requested, but we try to do some of them at least. If you don't ask, you don't get. So thank you very much for your time. Hopefully you found it useful uh, and I will see you on the next video.